Hey guys, welcome back to the Watch With Us channel. This is the Watch With Us podcast, we're calling it, but technically it's pretty much a video cast. My name is John Keel, and I am with my good friend, GCR. Introduce yourself, my friend. Hey, what's up, everybody? GCR, Jindalojo, go by a couple of names, but... Uh, <laughs> That's not watch, the only names. The Watch Slut, the Watch... Yeah, I was going to say, we've a got, couple a, other ones, yeah. we got a couple of good names for you. Uh, <laughs> Andy Garcia, you know, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> so, how you been, brother? Pretty good, man. Busy, busy, which is always a good thing with the family and work, but yeah. things are going well. You know, isn't it crazy? You, you get a couple of kids, and you used oh. to think you were busy before kids, and then you have kids. It's like, Nothing you're really busy, and then you have more kids, and you're even busier. It just, it, it snowballs. It's true, man. It's not even, you can't even compare it. No, it's great. It's all good stuff. Your kids are, your kids are gorgeous, and uh, yeah, so it's all good things, man. All good Thank things. You. So, uh, you know, let's kick it off like we normally should and uh, with wristwatch check. Um, so what are you wearing today, bud? I am wearing my newest, uh, acquisition. And I've said that a lot in the last, uh, I don't know, a year. <laughs> uh, I've had it for now almost three weeks. This is why you're a watch slut. Cause every week it's a new acquisition. It is. I don't know if you guys can see. So that. that's, that's the, uh, the Seamaster. Correct. The Omega Seamaster 300 ceramic. Now that's the new version, right? With the wave dial. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I mean, I've been seeing your posts on Facebook and Instagram and stuff, and I know you're loving that piece. And I have to tell you. I do. You're probably my third or fourth friend that uh, over the last two or three months that have actually gotten that exact piece. Really? Whether it's the blue or I think they make it in black as well, right? Uh, they and they make this other dial. It's the, the, the like that light gray, that gray dial. Yeah, no. Yeah, so I've got a couple of buddies. My buddy, my, uh, I have a good buddy of mine who's actually a Nashville uh, rock guy. He's, he's actually a touring uh, guitarist, and, and he just picked one up. Did he? Uh, yeah, my buddy Chris, who's got another YouTube channel, picked one up. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great piece, man. It's a great piece. I've never... I've always been a Speedmaster guy, which is really weird. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dive watch guy. Like, I love, love, love dive watches. Most of the watches I've ever owned are dive watches. For some reason, when it comes to Omega, I've always been a speedy guy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's strange. But now with this new piece, I didn't think at first I would love the dial. I thought it was going to be a little too, little too much for me. But I'll tell you, after, after my, my two buddies got it, after you got it, and uh, just seeing it, it's, it's really a gorgeous piece. It is. I, I just, I just love everything about it. And I didn't think I was going to either. I've never really been a Seamaster guy. Yeah. Um, you know, the vintage models aside, the diver Seamasters, I, I never, I never really thought I was going to uh, ever own one. Right. Um, I'm not a big James Bond fan. Um, you know, it just, it just never, you know, it just, I don't know. Something about the old bracelet didn't really sing to me. Yeah. And the plain blue, the plain blue dial. I take I take you more of a uh, uh, what, what do you call it a uh, Sopranos fan than a James Bond fan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. definitely. My, my my New Jersey Italian friend. <laughs> no, I, hold on. I, originally from Queens, New York. Oh, well, there you go. So I, yeah, so. I, I moved out here because of the wife. But anyway, J Jersey's yeah, great. You know what? Jersey and Queens aren't that much different when it comes. Yeah, to relax there, <laughs> county. <laughs> yeah, so everybody watching this has to know that if we're not breaking each other's chops, it means we don't like each other. So, yeah. you, I mean, if you guys had like a, if you guys had a live camera on us when we were together, we oh. didn't have to break each other's horns. And that's but that's, I think that's the way we show our affection, right? It's, it it's guys do. It's uh, great. Cool. So good stuff, man. Good stuff. I love you know, it. So I, I love it. It's, um, I, you know, just a quick, the only thing I'm not in love with is the clasp is, I think, way too, like. You know, it's long, right? Very long. I, I don't know why. I mean, maybe because, well, it's probably because of the diver's extension that it has in here, you know, uh, and there's better videos, you know, yeah. of, of that whole thing and that whole mechanism. That's probably why, but I think it's a little bit much. That's the only thing. Uh, other than that, it's, 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 it's different enough from the other Seamaster that made yeah. me really fall for it. The yeah. dial, like you said, the bracelet, quality bracelet. Love this the, bracelet I love the bezel. And the bezel, I mean, ceramic, and it's just, it, it's just beautiful. Right on, man. And for the price, I don't, I, in my opinion, you know, it can't be beat. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I love it. Enjoy it. Wear it in good health. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in about a week or two which, what you do love is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be selling this, right? Right. Yeah. Hey, look, you know what, though? I'm, I'm, I'm like that, but in a, to a lesser extreme where, like, my, my watch journey, it's really about the hunt. I find something I really want. And when I get it, I'll enjoy it for a certain amount of time. But then, you know, you tend to find other things you love. So I'm, I'm one of these guys who loves to trade and flip and I'm just not quite as good at, at it as you are, but, uh, but I'm learning, I'm learning, uh, <laughs> Jedi master. 
Yeah, Jedi. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I am rocking a piece that I just got about two or three days ago. Now, this is actually a prototype. And is that a Stratton? No. I am in love with this watch. It is a Grupo Gamma. Oh. It is, it is the, um, it's the prototype of oh. the brand new Dive Master. Uh, the Dive Master was introduced in 2016, which had a Japanese movement in it. It had a sapphire bezel and a handful of other things, I think 300 meter water resistance. They just completely redesigned this watch. So now there's a sapphire, I'm sorry, there's a uh, ceramic bezel, nice. there's ETA movement, 500 meter water resistance. This watch uh, is in pre-order now. And uh, I, I was lucky enough to get my hands on the prototype. I'm going to distribute to a couple of friends who are, uh, you know, YouTubers and bloggers and things like that. So I'm helping Naoki out with that. And of course, I sell them on WatchGauge. So that's, there's more than one purpose. But before, um, before I send this out, I happen to be leaving tomorrow to go on a scuba diving trip with the family down in the Caribbean. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the opportunity to bring this down to the Caribbean and, uh, and hang out with it and get some social media shots and if I can scrounge up a 24 millimeter strap. I was going to say, I hope you're not wearing that leather strap in the water. This, this is a Horween strap. It's beautiful. So I'm certainly not going to wear it in the water. But if I could scrounge up a rubber strap some, from somewhere back here in Watch Gauge Head. Oh, you, got, you got a lot of stuff back there. I know. It's just. You, gotta do it. you, you know what you got to do? I'm sorry. I don't mean to change the subject. But no. You have to do a little tour of the office one day there. One day we'll do that. I have to severely clean this office. Before. <laughs> it's, it's, you know what happens? I just get so busy and things pile up and then you clean it and then it piles up and you clean it. So right now it's very piled up. I actually, behind my computer here, I have a central air system that's getting installed when I'm away uh, because I've got these other units that are awful. So <laughs> it's a disaster now. So I have a question for you. I have a serious question. Um, and being the watch slut that you are, I think I know generally what the answer is going to be, but let's say you're going on vacation, you're going on a scoop trip to the Caribbean. Do you bring one watch or do you bring many? A good question. Um, I'm also a diver fan, as as you are. Yeah. So I probably bring at least three or four. I mean, most of my collection, except for a couple of you know vintage pieces and maybe an aviation piece, but still some of the aviation pieces that I have, even like moonlight as divers as well. Right. Um, yeah, I'd bring like three or four. Yeah. Watches. You know, it depends on your. I think it depends on your collection. But yeah. For me, yeah, definitely three or four. Well, you know, because I obviously have access to a lot of watches that we sell and I accumulate them over time. Uh, I'm sitting here right now with one, two, three, four, five, six watches in front of me. I got one at home I plan to bring. And as we discussed before we started recording here, I've got two watches that are in route, one from DHL and one from UPS that were both supposed to be here yesterday. Now they're telling me they're not going to be here till next week. So those are not going to make it. But right now it looks like I'm bringing seven watches. So, um, <laughs> you know, who knows? What are you bringing? Let's see. All Let's right. So, so I'm bringing the group of Gap. Uh, okay. I'm just going to go down the line in no particular order. I have the, uh, this is the Ocean Crawler Core Diver. Uh, absolutely love this piece. This is a real serious dive watch. It's rated. You carry that, you carry that brand now? I do, I do carry it. Uh, the issue that we have with Ocean Crawler is that they're always out of stock. Um, it's funny, I spoke with Christian from Ocean Crawler yesterday, and he literally has two models on hand and maybe a small handful of each. So... But he, he comes out with watches quite often. He's very, very good at uh, building up the hype. When the watches get to him, they sell out almost immediately, which is a beautiful problem to have. Mm -hmm. But we are going to – I'm going to – I plan on diving at least five or six times in the next few days. So I'm, I, I'm bringing mostly real divers watches. So we have the Group O Gamma 500 meters. We've got the, uh, the Ocean Crawler Core Diver. This is 2,000 feet. But the cool thing about Ocean Crawler is they actually test them. They, they test them in a tank, a uh, pressure tank, and they test them to 20% more than this stated depth. So, so this is a probably 2,400 foot watch, which I am probably going to go maybe 80 feet. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to push my luck to 100, but, you know, we'll see. So I have those two. I'm bringing the uh, Boulder. This is the Odyssey, but this is actually the carbon case. I'll, I'll put some photos up along with it. This is a forged carbon case, super light, um, 500 meter, I believe, 500 meter piece, ETA movement. I'm going to bring this guy. Uh, I've got a pair of NTHs I'm bringing. I'm bringing this. This is the uh, Devil Ray. Mm -hmm. 
Devil Ray is a fantastic that's a model. Great watch for from the Caribbean. Absolutely, this that's is a, that's product. a Caribbean watch right there. It is. Well, the color is perfect yeah. for the summer, right? So this, this I believe is a 500 meter watch, and I have my glasses on. That's, I'm getting old, man. So uh, 500 meter watch. This one I, I dove last summer with my orange version of this. I'm going to bring the Belize, Belize right? right? When you went to Belize? Yeah, when we went to Belize, that was that was spectacular. The dive there was second to none. Um, I'm hoping the Caribbean is close to as good as that one. I didn't know Belize has the second biggest barrier reef on the planet. And my, my first dive there was on the edge of the reef. It was spectacular. Yeah, I know it's true because I know when I've been to Cancun, it's also part of the same reef. Correct. Yeah. It's, you know, Belize is close to, that, yeah, yeah. close to that part of Mexico. It's unbelievable. So um, anyway, I've got this one I don't carry. This is a brand that I am in love with called Aquadive. Now, Aquadive is uh, this. I feel like I'm in a, like I'm in a diver's watches group. I'm well, basically. seriously, like I said, I'm going. I'm literally going on a diving trip, so I'm I'm bringing a handful of divers. The Aquadive is a three thousand meter. Uh, Christ. Yeah, it's this, <laughs> but it's cool. It's a GMT. Uh, it, wow, it's a GMT, really? Yeah, it's. It, uh, you'll see the photos when I put them in there. If you see that orange hand Dude, down, I like that, man. You, yeah, you don't, you don't carry that? Not yet. Oh, Wink. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. I, well, so what's I, really quickly i mean i know the other brands but yeah. I, I do have a question Where, what's the story about this brand like where they from? so aqua dive actually has a pretty rich history it, you know everybody knows doxa you know doxa you've got the doxa that you love and doxa you know every it's doxa is one of those brands that they came out with diving watches right around the the 50s and 60s when um you know same time rolex was and everybody else so was aqua dive and aqua dive has a very similar styling to doxa it's got a very similar history. It just never had the same, I guess, marketing hype. It never had the whole Clive Cussler thing. Swiss, and, uh, Swiss movement. I, I can't. I had. I have to guess that it is um, mostly Swiss. I don't want to say for sure because, to be very honest with you, I don't carry it, so I haven't looked into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I picked up an Aqua Dive, a vintage Aqua Dive from the '60s. Uh, again, which I'll insert a photo in. I don't think I have it here with me. But uh, I picked up a, a Aqua Dive from the 60s that I just saw it visually. And to me, it was darn near perfect for a vintage dive watch. And that kind of spurred my love for Aqua Dive. Mm -hmm. And they do some really amazing stuff. They are going through a transi transition right now with regards to their, their selling channels and they're building a new website and a bunch <laughs> of other things. So I will hope to be able to, you know, work with them in the next couple of months once that's all done. But you know, I can tell you firsthand experience. I've had not only the vintage Aqua Dive, but I've had others aside from this piece. And if you're a dive watch guy, like I mean, a real serious, serious yeah. dive watches, Aqua Dive's a killer. And and I have to say the same for Ocean Crawler. Um, when you're looking at a micro brand, I don't know if I'd consider Aqua Dive a micro brand or not. I've been around for a while now, right? So. Yeah. But but you know, whether you look at something like Aqua Dive or you look at if you're looking for a micro brand style. Ocean Crawler is a beast when you're talking serious dive watches. Again, I'm not going to use any of these watches to their capability, but as a, as a diver and as a dive watch fan, you know, it's, it's kind of partly, you know, part of my passion. So, so these are the ones I'm bringing, and I have another NTH that is at home that's actually sitting on my suitcase that I'm bringing, which is the Nazario Azuro. So, uh, and I plan on diving with every single one of these watches, hopefully one on each wrist. I'm going to Schwarzkopf it underwater, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. You should. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so we have some other news. You and I kind of had a small chat earlier about what yep. we're going to talk about, and you mentioned you mentioned Marlon Brando's. What was it? His GMT. Yeah. That's so his his Rolex GMT Master. Well, I have to be um, honest with you. I saw I saw the posts uh -huh. on Facebook, and I saw the posts on Instagram. I did not read a single word about it. So I'm going to be learning this as much as anybody else watching this is. So why don't you tell, kind of give us an idea what what that's about? So he wore it in uh, Apocalypse Now, I believe. Oh, yeah. so that famous movie from whatever year that was. I actually never saw it. Oh, it's um, if if you're into those real serious like war movies, it's it's really a. I've it's, heard it's a crazy movie. Yeah, and I should have watched it already. I don't know why I hadn't put it on the Netflix queue, but right. it's uh, so that's the watch that he wore in that movie, um, and I think it became famous. Well famous it became famous because of the movie but i think the reason it stood out to people is because it didn't have a bezel so it was a gmt i was gonna ask you that yeah so it's it has no bezel so it's very unique now is that know? the way the watch was originally made that i ha i didn't do that research and that's okay. something that i plan on doing because i don't the article that i read didn't really talk about 
Right. To me, when I saw the post, it looked like, you know, it was a watch that he had that the bezel just got knocked off and never replaced it. I have, I have a feeling that may be the case. You okay. know? I, I have a feeling that may be the case, and maybe he just liked the way it looked, you know? <laughs> or, you know, listen, the guy's rich enough, Marlon Brando. I mean, he passed now, but he was rich enough that he probably said, you know what, I'll take the bezel off. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I like the look of it, right? Yeah, he probably liked the look of it, so who knows? But um, that's, that's, that watch is going to auction. Okay. Um, I think his daughter uh, realized that there's a lot of hype around the watch and that the watch a lot of people have been talking about like watches and movies recently uh watches worn by famous actors like like paul newman as we all know yeah um and she probably saw how much money that went for so i'm pretty sure it's his daughter who's donating not donating but i'm sure she worked out some arrangement with the auction house to have this auctioned off uh very very soon i believe oh Cool. Do we know when it's going to auction and, and what they expect to hammer for? Not right. Not not yet. I mean, I the article didn't really talk too much about it yet, but I okay. think it's coming up soon. So we'll have to follow that and maybe uh, maybe do a follow up episode on, uh, on on the actual results of that uh, of that of that auction. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, so, you know, I think about Rolex, right? And I saw something. That and, and I, again, I mentioned this to you earlier. I saw something. I saw a post. I, I believe it was on Facebook. One of the Facebook groups that somebody asked the question: Is the Rolex wait list? Because we all know that all the sport models now, the steel sport models. You ask if you ask for a GMT of any of any sort. You ask for a Submariner of any sort, a Sea Dweller. You know, almost every steel sport watch from Rolex. Obviously, the Daytona. Mm-hmm. You walk into a retail. You ask for a watch, and they say, "Oh." You know, you'll never get it or we'll put you on a wait list. Mm-hmm. And I, the guy asked me online, is the wait, Rolex wait list real? And then the conversation kind of progressed a little bit. And I, it, it got me to thinking, I have some thoughts on it. But before I share my thoughts, what do you, what do you think? Is, do you think that if you walked into a Rolex dealer, asked for, let's say, a, a Batman, that they'll take your name and say, okay, you're seventh on the list and the next, the seventh one they get in that that's going to you. Is that how, how you think that works? I don't know. I, it's a, it's a good question. It's a, I think it's a great topic to discuss. Uh, I think that one thing that I've always found a little peculiar and maybe I'll even say suspicious about this whole thing is that Rolex pumps out how many hundreds and thousands of watches a year. I mean, I don't know if we have official numbers. I, I, don't, I don't think anybody. I've heard anywhere from like 700 to like 800,000. Yeah. Watches. I've heard I, I, the number I've always heard, you know, thrown around for years has been close to a million. Yeah. So close to a million. Right. So, I mean, I'm not saying there isn't 800,000 to a million people that can afford a Rolex or would want a Rolex out there. There obviously are. <laughs> but there are obviously because if there's this waiting list. Right. But I mean, I don't know, but it's every year. It's not like every two years. Yeah. And that's what makes me wonder what you're saying there in that topic. It makes you wonder a little bit like, hey, if you actually, so I think at first, initially, you think to yourself, um, oh, wait list. Maybe there is, you know? But yeah. then you start thinking about the numbers and it's like every year. Well, so, so let's take that a step further because this thought also crossed my head while I was thinking about this whole wait list thing. And it's weird that you mentioned it because it's the same kind of thought process I went through. Add up Rolex, Breitling, Tag Heuer, yeah. Omega. You know, you're talking millions and millions and millions. Yeah, they're watches. not the only brand. Yeah, no, you're talking millions of watches a year, every yeah. single year. Now, let's say, for instance, I bought, I don't know, an Omega, like you bought your Seamaster. Mm-hmm. There's going to be, a, I don't know how many, but maybe a million Omegas made or half a million yeah. Omegas made. And then think about next year that's going to happen, and the year after, and the year after. So I wonder, I wonder where all these watches go. Do they just yeah. end up... Because they've been doing this for, for decades, right? I know, so, I know. So the watches were made in the 80s and 70s. Are they just sitting in somebody's drawer? <laughs> That's a great <laughs> they, question. They, you know, I don't know. It's absurd because, you know, and this is like a morbid thought, but, you know. Somewhere Marlon Brando's ghost is popping off the bezels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and then going to auction, right? I don't know. It's just really crazy. So it's a crazy, crazy, crazy thought. I'm not going to give up any industry secrets here whatsoever. I was having a conversation with somebody uh, Mm -hmm. just a a couple of days ago when this whole thing was coming about, when I saw this post and when I had a discussion with somebody who's in the industry Mm -hmm. and this person claims that, and and it's a very good source. I don't know how true it is, but this person claims that a a higher volume Rolex dealer, you know, you take you one of your bigger Rolex stores in, in let's say anywhere in the U S probably anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. This guy seems to claim that there's a safe that's full of, I don't want to say full, 
but there may be a half a dozen Submariners, half a dozen Batmans, you know, four or five steel Daytonas. And that they don't actually have a wait list. They tell people there is, they put, they say they'll put you on the wait list and they'll call you when one becomes available. And I said, well, that's, that's absurd. Why would they do that? He said, well, imagine somebody comes in that same store looking to buy, I don't know, $130,000 Patek or, you know, a Richard Mill for, for, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. They also say to that person, look, because you're a great client, I've got a couple of steel sport Rolexes in the back. If you want to buy one, nobody can really get them. So it, it is kind of a sweetener to keep those clients happy is the theory that this guy shared with me that he seems to think somebody else who has knowledge said now again this is kind of all speculation i don't have any first-hand knowledge but that whole that whole pre- that whole premise seems to make sense right i could see yeah i could definitely see it at a high volume dealer yeah and and, and, so and let me ask you a question though sure. just a devil's advocate for a second wouldn't rolex want to know why I mean, you know, Rolex is very, very, you know, on top of their, aren't they really like on top of their authorized this, dealers? And, this, this is one of the reasons you and I get along so well is because the same, same kind of thing went through my head. I'm thinking, you know, it's my understanding. And again, I may be wrong because I never really, I know I've worked at retailers before. I've never worked at a Rolex retailer. Is my understanding that when watches sell, they have to provide Rolex with that yeah. client information when it sold the price, the person's address and stuff like that uh it was my understanding that that's what happened so so if let's say a store got in i don't know a daytona a sub a no data a sea dweller and a batman and a pepsi you know they come into the inventory rolex knows when they get them why would they be sitting in a safe for let's say three months i don't know and um unless they're part of they're part of the game well, of course. So, yeah, but the only problem I'd have with that that theory is that why would they want to help sweeten the deal on, let's say, a Patek purchase or, a, you know, no, maybe, who knows? Maybe it's for the person looking at the uh, 70000 or 80000 or whatever, $100,000 $100, platinum presidential. Who knows? Maybe it's that guy there. They're throwing a steel sport as a sweetener, too. I don't know. But no, I'm t- I, you're right. I mean, I can't see them trying to help another brand or help the dealer promote another brand. Right. But I guess maybe – the way I'm thinking about it is that for Rolex, the wait list has been, the whole thing has been a good thing for them. It's been amazing. And, and so, uh, maybe they're, maybe they're, maybe it, it is what your friend's saying, but maybe not with like the sweetener of another brand. Who knows? Maybe more of just, just withholding for just a withhold. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's kind of funny is that, I mean, I, I spent 14 years in high end retail managing a very, you know, relatively high end store, pretty high end store. We did have a pre owned section. We bought, Daytonas and subs and all every sport model you could think of. And, and I'm going to give you actual numbers here. Let's say in the early 2000s, let's say mid 2000, 2004, 2005, mm-hmm. I would buy a stainless steel sub date that was within five or 10 years old. I would buy one from somebody as a trade in or pay them cash at the most $4,000, typically around 3,500. If it didn't have a box, 4,000, if it had a box, I turn around, I'd sell that watch for, let's say, 5,000, right? So that would be the store's profit. We'd service it, get it all up and going and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that was a typical number for, let's say, a stainless steel sub. Nowadays, they're going for what? Eight, nine? And if you want to buy one brand new, you're talking nine and change, I believe, or close to it. And, and if you can even get your hands on one. Man, the last, in the last year, the, the GMTs alone. Oh, gone up. absurd. Absurd. Well, the funny thing is, is that the whole Daytona wait list mm-hmm. and trading for higher than retail value or whatever that's been going on since my, since I entered the industry in 99. So that, and, and I'm sure a couple of years before that, I, my feeling is that Rolex kind of saw what they were doing with that. They said, you know what, let's, let's tap the brakes on the production of, I don't know, the GMTs, the GMT would follow suit. Then they tap the brakes on the subs and the smart, you know, the smart thing is now is now you see what explorers are starting to do the same thing, right? But the thing is, by doing this, aren't they also – all right, so they're promoting their other lines. They're getting people to buy other Rolexes, brand new. Yep. You know, so they're getting them – so they're basically – do what they're basically doing is getting every single Rolex that's been made brand new now yep. um, as a um, – I don't want to say collector. It's a hot commodity. Yes, exactly. So I wouldn't be surprised in just speculation here. I wouldn't be surprised if in five years you see that stainless steel and two-tone – they just, yeah. which now nobody seems to want, but you'll see, you, hopefully, I mean, for Rolex's sake, 
in five years, you see the same sort of situation with with the day jobs. No, look at all, like look at the Rolex Explorers now. The not not the Explorer, not the Explorer One. Sorry, the, the, the even the two. Yeah. The 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 polar dial. I mean, that went from being like thirty five hundred to thirty nine hundred, like yeah. maybe two years ago. Yeah. Now the polar dial is like seven or eight. Well, in two thousand five, if somebody walked in with an Explorer Two with a white dial. I wouldn't pay a penny more than two grand for that watch. And I'd sell <laughs> it for 3,200, you know, yeah, nobody cared about it. Nobody, I couldn't sell them. They would sit in my case for a half of a year or a year. I remember somebody, you know, not that, not that long ago, but like maybe five years ago saying to one of my friends who had one, what, that, that's a Rolex. That's gotta be a fake. They didn't even know what the polar dial was. Yeah. And, and actually when I was selling them and buying them, they never even called it a polar dial. So that whole new nickname is fairly new. Well, that's from the, the Instagram. Well, world. that's what it is, is too, though, is when, when watches are given nicknames, they kind of get hotter, you know? They know they do. It's funny. I mean, you know, any smart marketer working for any particular brand would start nicknaming their, their models, um, you know. It's, or, make, or nicknaming their bracelets, like, uh, you know, somebody we know, the Jingly Janglies. <laughs> <laughs> I, could. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Oh, man. So, yeah, so it's an interesting theory. It's a really interesting theory. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to what the comments are. On Me this too. One. And then, guys, in, in the comments, you know, obviously give your opinion. But, you know, I think John made some good points there. And, you know, I think we're on the same wavelength there when, you know, I think they're just trying to get all their models to, to be the hot, hot items. But in turn, they're also making the pre-owned market pretty hot. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I mean – you know, I wrote an article for Quill and Ped, I think about two years ago, give or take, about how I've never owned a Rolex and that I planned on buying one, which was a sub-no date. Mm. And that was two years ago, and, and the sub-no date has gone up 30% since then, and I still haven't bought one. Um, I've been trying to get one from our uh, friend Joey Bananas, but uh, he's not seeming to bite yet. So we'll see. But, yeah, no, I, I – think, you know, I, yo, he sold that. Uh, I'll he kill did. him. I'll kill him because I told him no I wanted, the, no I wanted the right of first refusal. I think that was yours, wasn't it? Well, for me, no, that wasn't mine. No, I, I, I sold him my Explorer. Well, uh, we trade. That's the thing. That's the infamous trade. <laughs> <laughs> they can, almost caused World War Three. We'll, we'll get into that on another uh, episode. Yeah, but you, you really took advantage. We should, of do, we should do an episode on trades. <laughs> you should do that for sure. I've done a lot. I how I got this. You that's know what I want to do? Here's what I want to do. I want to start with a watch that's valued at a thousand bucks or less. <laughs> And I, I, we, I, forget, I think they call it the paperclip challenge, right? You start with a paperclip, you trade for something else, trade for something, and end up with, like, I don't know, a boat, right? I want to <laughs> do this with a watch. I want to I start with a watch that's maybe a 1000 bucks, give or take, and I want to see if I can work my way up to, I don't know. Case study a sub, right here. A, okay. A sub yeah. note. I did it already, so I'm a case study. All right, cool. Well, you got a document everywhere along the way. I know, I know. Oh, it was, uh, watch with us. Yeah, it, it, I, we, now we, well, we'll do it again. How we'll about that? that? All right, so you do, it, you do it, I do it, whoever wants to do it. Maybe we'll do it as a team. That's actually maybe, a good maybe, idea. Maybe I'll donate the first watch and you help make the trades. That sounds good. And at the end of it, I keep whatever you end up with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, we both have to run. Yeah. I think we uh, we hit a good time limit here. We, we hit – Hit some really good points. I hope we hit some good points. I felt like it was a fun conversation. Likewise. Yeah, man. So uh, enjoy the vacation, man. I can't wait to see. Nice. I can't wait to see the pictures. Make sure you're, uh, you know, promoting them on the, the daily wristwatch check and yep. on the the watch gauge Instagram and uh, looking yeah, forward was, to seeing. So I was just gonna say, let's let's. Why don't you tell her where can they find Gentilogio? So at Gentilogio, I know that's not the easiest name to say, but John will link it um, below. Um, that's my Instagram, and then on the. Uh, Facebook, the daily wristwatch check is the Facebook group. It's the group, right. Yeah. And awesome. um, about almost 3,000 members growing. Uh, it's a fun group. And it's, it's a great group. group. Doesn't seem to be any drama. No, which is fantastic, which is weird, right? Knock on wood. Knock, yeah, knock on something. But it's, uh, it's been a great group. It's fun. You know, you're in there. Everybody's, all the guys from the, the Watch With Us channel are in there. So definitely right check it out, guys. Very cool. All right. And you can find me at a couple places. On, on Instagram, I'm at John M. Keel. And then uh, at Watch Gauge. And then Watch Gauge is on Facebook and a couple other places. You can find it at watchgauge.com. We thank everybody for tuning in, for hopefully enjoying this episode as, uh, as I had a good time. You can find links to everything we're talking about below. So don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that little bell button below here on YouTube. That will alert you every time a new video comes up. Go over and check out the Daily Wrist Watch Check on Facebook as well as follow Gentilogio on Instagram. And uh, GCR, my friend, thank you so much, brother.
Good talk, bro. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> 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 we'll talk to you soon, guys. Later, guys. Bye. Cheers.